So people, this is a really great discussion. Yeah, look, look <laughs> back at the notes. We're 27 minutes in. Should, should we recap it real quick? Oops. For those of you just tuning in, <laughs> we're discussing how the removal of work is removal or repurposing of the work along different lines in the working group structure that we had before makes some sense now and then specifically how to do it. And um, also, I, I agree with the complexity of the project. So the hope here is not to to create more complexity. It's to provide an opportunity for folks who want to engage with the chaos resources, the things that we have in ways that are meaningful to them without getting into that complexity. So yeah. Well, and to be clear, the complexity, uh, as, as I see it, isn't a isn't a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing. Yeah. Like the project is evolving and we're getting more groups involved. We're getting more people involved. And I think this is this is a natural evolution of the growth of an open source project. Um, mm -hmm. They get they get more complex, but it's um, it's a good thing. I think we're doing it in a way that, that makes it a good thing and not a just complexity for complexity. Right on. Um... Okay, right on. Thank you. That's that's really great. So thanks, Don, for also offering to create that draft yeah. uh, document. Okay. Um, any other comments? And then we can move on. Um, okay. So we have a new metric. So Don, this is what you put on right here. I'm guessing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because this is the metric that I need to replace the time to close metric with in the starter project health metrics model. So I think there was some discussion around that in the metrics model meeting, which I missed because I was at boss backstage. Yeah, and it was, um, I guess the one question was, is this going to remove the other metric? That was like the one main question. Remember, there were four yeah. metrics I think you had, and one was like time to close. Mm -hmm. And you were it, like, yeah, that's, it was that's time to close. It. And I would see, I would see us removing time to close and replacing it with okay. this one. Okay. Um, just because the starter project health is supposed to be um, simple. Really simple. I think that was the only question. Okay. But I kind of needed to wait until we merged this pull request before okay. I could go back and update the um, the model. Yep. Let me try to think if there were. <clears throat> so Sean did add the auger visual. Oh, yes, I was going to create the PR, but it was done because you did it. Yep. Uh, um, where did you add the auger visual, Sean? Because um, it's not in the PR. Um, I, I added it to the Google Docs. I got to remember to like mark that we've done a PR and people should stop editing the Google Doc because I now I've got a archaeology some version archaeology to figure out what people have changed. That's my I bad. That... I didn't put a note at the top that we had a PR. I Sorry. don't think we changed anything else here in this other than adding. We, we, spent no, we spent no time uh, on editing the text. Is that right, Kevin? You were, uh, I think. Or you weren't there, but. We, no, I, I was I was here. Well, uh, not in the metrics models, but I was I was here in the meeting where we edited this document in common. Okay. Uh, and then the, after that, those edits were made, I think Don made the PR a couple hours later. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and I'm like, 99.99 percent .99 sure if in the metrics model meeting we made no changes i don't see can you scroll down is the auger visualization down below i think sean added this one no that's mine yeah but i i, I left that as an auger visualization i do have another auger visualization that i could um provide but i think it's nominally redundant with what you have there um okay it's kind of up to you. I mean, I, I'm, I could provide another one, but yours comes from auger data. So it does. Yeah. That seems good yeah. enough for me. <laughs> so it sounds like we didn't add a visualization for auger. 
So maybe, maybe. The yeah, VR I took, I well. interpreted yours as the visualization for Augur. Oh, well, there you go. So nothing was added. Perhaps. Like I went and found a visualization from Augur for that, but it's materially the same as what you have or not different enough to include separately. And I think what you have there is totally fine. The Augur visualization will inevitably have more things going on. Well, is that it? Yeah. So, Sean, when you were in the metrics model meeting, did you make any did you make any changes to the, this document? Um, well, the change the change I made is this visualization actually wasn't there. The there was a link to the PNG file, but there was not a um, there this but this wasn't in the document. So I clicked on that PNG and put it in the document. So this was can there. Just, um, Matt, can you just so yeah, that, if you click that link, it will open up that exact same figure. Yep. So the only thing I changed was actually literally putting the figure in this document. Okay. Um, Matt, can you can you go to file and versions and let's just look. I'm um, I'm looking I'm looking now. The okay. the the last version was edited by Dawn on March third at three ten a.m. Okay. And so then nothing minutes. nothing was changed in the doc. Okay. 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 Thank so you. then at this at this point it's just merging merging this. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So does somebody uh, want to merge that for us? I think I'm there. I can do it. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. And so I will incorporate um, the ratio metric into the model. Okay. And then just and tag Elizabeth. Yep. And tag Elizabeth because she can then just merge it and get it out. Okay. <clears throat> Cool, I'll do that. Okay, updating metric. Okay. Metric is merged. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. All right. Um, anything else you need on that, Don? Nope, nope. that's good. Okay. I'm good. Right, right on. Thank you. Um, all right. So yesterday in DEI, we had a conversation. So we have the project badging document, which I'll show you real fast. <laughs> So this is the DEI.MD file that is proposed for uh, projects to include in, in their re repos. Um, these are the kind of just longstanding, not just, they've always just kind of been there um, for metrics that we were asking for um, with respect to the DEI.MD file, that we would have an, a project comment on how they address newcomer experience, how they address project burnout, and so on and so forth. Um, and then as they move up, they have to address an, those original four plus two new metrics and so on. So the discussion that came up yesterday was um, about kind of really thinking through what these four metrics should be with respect to kind of that bronze level and then subsequently through silver, through gold and through platinum, what those four original metrics should be. Um, and the, the 
the two that came up is maybe something later down the road that we would ask for are project burnout. For example, how does a project address project burnout within their, their work? Um, and then how does that project recognize contributors uh, in their work that not, not bad metrics, but maybe just metrics kind of down the road. And the um, suggestion was to keep inclusive leadership and keep newcomer experiences. And then also the two metrics that would uh, be added would be, are they in here? One is project accessibility, which is a metric that um, we have a event location accessibility. So I think it would be moderately related to that. And then communication transparency. So like ensuring that the community is, you know, has open and public documents, that the repositories are open and public, that all meetings are open, public, transparent, or um, uh, accessible, uh, transcriptions are provided, you know, the kind of things like this. How do you, how does your community work to, to be open and, and, and transparent in your work? Um, so the, so anyway, that was the request to remove project burnout, recognizing contributors and replace it with project accessibility and communication work transparency. Metrics that don't exist currently. Yes. Oh, that doesn't exist currently. Is that what you said, Kevin? They okay, don't. So we would have to exactly define them. how that was defined. Um, because I think it depends a little bit on how that's defined, whether or not that would be a good one for bronze or whether that would be more appropriate for the next level. Um, because if it's, you know, like hardcore accessibility topics, that sometimes takes projects a little while to find someone who can help with, you know, is it accessible via screen readers? Is it, you know, there's there's a bunch of accessibility stuff that um, a brand new open source project might not have done yet, even though I would have, I would like for them to, but it requires some special skills um, to do some of that kind of hardcore stuff. We, we did talk about that a little bit yesterday. This is more kind of about general accessibility and it doesn't really get into the uh, specific accessibility of the, the software or the kind of the that uh, Nielsen Norman accessibility like color blindness mm -hmm. and things okay. of that nature. Uh, so it's, it's more about kind of general project accessibility. Okay. Uh, In that so, case, that's probably good for bronze. So could you, do you have an example, Kevin? Like what, what would, what is general project accessibility? Uh, it's on an, on an open platform, I suppose. You have access, you have access to the code. I mean, it's kind of that, that general, the general openness of the project, right? So the, that at a, at a base level, open source allows you to do these things and, and the project is allowing you to do these things as well, right? Okay. That might overlap a little bit with communication and work transparency. A little bit, I think. Uh, the one is kind of about the maybe the platform and the artifacts uh, being accessible, and the other one is kind of about the process and the communication being. But it's generally the uh, they could both be called transparency, or both be accessibility, or both be openness, or some. Mm -hmm. It's but the one is the one is kind of about the platform and the artifacts, and the other one is about the work process and the communication. Uh, but transparency around both of them and access to both of them is is what I'm getting at, or what I'm proposing. Because uh, at a base level, that's the like if you're looking at a project, if you don't have access to these, then you're you're not welcome. <laughs> so I'm trying to. Jot down a few things. I don't know if this is. I would maybe, sorry, can we go back to the project accessibility? I would maybe call that something else um, and not not use the word accessibility mm -hmm. um, because I think that that, you know, like I immediately went to screen readers and, you know, colorblindness and sort of like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, project access maybe. Is this sort of what you're talking about too, Kevin? Like just access to the code, access to the documentation. Like I put times that you're thoughtful, you know, but, but not every time is just US centric. Yeah, yeah, that could be added. Um, and I, I do wanna reiterate that. So when I, when I 
when I thought of these two, uh, that was just I kind of thought of them pretty quickly when when we dropped them in. So maybe the maybe the four that we're choosing aren't don't include these two. Uh, but my my inspiration for having this conversation is around the 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 model that Dawn had proposed. So what are those what are those four starter metrics that we would look at for for this? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it's maybe it's not these two. Maybe it's maybe it's if anyone else has any other ideas on two that could be included here. Uh, or, or four that can be included. Uh, I really like project access access and I think that aligns with what the folks at all in would also like to see early. Okay. Yeah, so I, think I also I also really think the communication and transparency bit yeah. is very important at the beginning of a project. I mean, I because I think that if if the project isn't actually operating in the open, then it just it just makes everything else really really hard. Yeah. I think that that's I think that's critical. I think that's really really important. Yeah, and I think for example, access to project work times or communication tools. Um, that involves some of the website stuff where you actually have to make that visible to people. I think like, like access to project documentation, like honestly, a lot of open source projects more, more than not seem to be poorly documented. Um, even when projects make an effort, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of work to get the newcomer level docs down. So I'm just wondering if, um, It's a bit of a software yeah. issue in general. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, so, I mean, you know, I guess have I guess having it as opposed to not having it is good. I think. Um, I wonder if there's any. Um, do you have any known benchmarks for software documentation quality, Don? Has anybody tried to measure that that you've run, run across? That sounds like a great metric. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it does. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you'd measure it. Yeah, right. But, it sounds um, slippery. Sounds great. John, I know a couple of people are uh, doing research in that area, and they have a substantial amount of, uh, of uh, work published. And I mean, it's, I agree with you, it's something that is very common within the uh, open source world. And one good aspect that we can look at documentation is to copy the model from OpenStack they treat documentation the same way they treat code. So they try to bring in contributions in that space and give credit for people the same way pull requests in developing complex algorithm is done. So in that way, people with without technical background have great visibility when they are uh, rewarding contributors in the community that has really improved their documentation tremendously. One other way we could also improve documentation, I mean, it's still new, but it's working for the trial versions, is using a kind of uh, language model to explain. I mean, those are things we can discuss later, but for now, we could really improve, uh, copy the model from OpenStack. It, it works very well. And I've been in that community. I see. Yeah. Okay. I was just gonna say maybe we can add maybe we can add documentation quality as a as a metric to to look at in the future. Uh, and I would say if if we're uh, quality metrics, if we're adding them to project badging, those probably are down down the line in gold or platinum. If we're starting to measure quality, I think early on in early on in bronze, it's more about do these things exist, and then I think as you go you go down through the 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 badging, it it becomes yes they exist and they're good quality. Yeah, because you could also look at the readability of code. Okay. If the documentation is poor, it gives poor uh, readability of that piece of code. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think the dip, there's a subtle difference with documentation that I think is harder to get at, but I want to think about, which is like with code, if, if you can compile and install it, then ostensibly it works. Um, but with documentation, we don't know who abandons even trying because the documentation is so poor or it doesn't meet, meet newcomers where they are. So that's kind of the case I was thinking of. Yeah, no, I, I understand. For example, I'm looking at this point where 
even when there is a page like this, you want to show how to run, for example, Grimo Lab or let's say Ago, then yes. it might be you are working now on version 12, the documentation is pointing to version, let's say seven. A lot of API calls have changed. The documentation is not reflecting the new version. There was a space where you need to do a CD into a folder. That folder has been removed and things like that. Mm -hmm. So people keep on in the loop of the old project. It's not just working. So they cannot even understand what is happening. And that's why some so at times like the OpenStack model, they make sure that documentation and code goes hand in hand. Any change in the source code reflects immediately in the document before it is released. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd like to add for a future future one for one of the higher levels is um, a clear governance documentation that shows a path to leadership. Because I think that's super important. I mean, I'm just going to be on my governance bandwagon for this. No, for this I think thing, you're right. it's, it's something that I think is, is super important. That might be at the top level um, because it's, it, you know, it's a, it's not something that teeny tiny projects are going to necessarily have, but for, right. for bigger projects that want the higher levels, I think it's important. It's important. I agree. Because it also works to account for transparency and uh, traceability. Mm -hmm. I can find it. This is helpful because it does start helping us think through, you know, what these additional metrics can be in silver and gold and platinum. So, um, Kevin, could I ask you to just maybe take a look at? I was just trying to to write down. You know, just few start of, start the documents for those two. Yeah, and may, hopefully these are helpful starting points mm -hmm. for what you're thinking with project access and work transparency. So, uh, so I don't have the chaos community uh, Google account. Do you want that document to be created under that? If if so, oh, yeah, could I'll you just try, create a uh, yeah. blank document titled and just send me I'll, the link? I'll in? just share. I think you I think I can share the. I'm surprised you don't have access, but I can just share the login stuff right. for Drive. Uh, yeah, I do have access to it on Drive or that Drive folder. Uh, but if I but if I create the document in there, it'll be created under my account. It won't be created under the the chaos community. Yeah, that's I I can give you the the chaos account info. Okay. Yep. Okay. And this is good. So, Sean, the one question. Last time, I think uh, around January period, you were looking for some ad accounts we could not. Uh, we could not get access to it. Have you solved that problem? There were some accounts flying around. I know that I don't think we ever solved the Gitbook access. Okay. That's, I think, what you're talking about. Uh, Georg had access to that. Uh, okay. all, all along, he had access to it. Uh, but I think he had stepped away from the project for kind of personal reasons for That's a short well. period of time. So he wasn't around during that, uh, that conversation. But I believe. Uh, uh him and elizabeth had gotten together and uh access may have been shared okay so sounds good that's awesome okay we are at the end of time everybody so thank you for an incredibly productive meeting it was great yeah like we have a couple of items um and look forward to seeing y'all again thanks All for right. coming that's awesome thanks everybody bye. thanks everyone bye, bye.